hands down the best thing that I've ever done that's allowed me to quit my job and become a full-time artist is, and bear with me because this is gonna sound really obvious, start to create art that people actually want to buy. And I'm not saying that to be big-headed. It's more of a mindset, a way of thinking, or a series of checkboxes that I follow with every painting that I create. And it all starts with the canvas. You need good quality materials to make good quality art. You don't need the best of the best, but cheap materials just won't cut it when you're trying to create sellable art. I also think about my surface. A well-prepped surface makes the painting process miles easier. I use Windsor & Newton Gesso to prep my canvases with one or two layers. And then for my detail work, I usually sand them smooth. But I'm thinking of doing something a little bit different with this piece. So I'm actually going to use the gesso to put some texture onto that canvas. Because I'm using the gesso to create such thick abstract marks, I'm going to have to leave it to dry now so that I can actually come back and paint on top of it. So I'm going to leave it and I'll be back in an hour or so. So the canvas is dry now. I had to leave it overnight because it's so cold here that the acrylics take so long to dry. So we're all good. We've got a nice bit of texture on here that's completely dry. And yeah, I'm not 100% sure what I'm actually going to paint on here yet. You've obviously seen the thumbnail already, so you know what I'm going to paint. So fingers crossed it turns out okay. And for me, I'm just going to chuck some paint on here and see what happens. Okay, that's not exactly what I'm doing. I do have a little bit of a plan. And after the surface prep, the next thing on my checklist is colours. People buy art because they connect with it. It plays with an emotion. And one of the primary symbols of emotion are colours. Predetermining the colours you use for a painting, actually thinking about why you're choosing that particular palette for the piece, and coming up with a colour story is key in making art that people want to buy. I'm still not 100% sure what I'm painting here, but I have chosen a colour palette. I'm really into these cooler, more neutral colours at the minute, and I don't want to overwhelm the viewer with too much contrast. I'm using colours that work well together, and that needs a little bit of knowledge about colour theory, but there's loads of videos out there that can teach you all about that. You want definite and intentional colours. Muddy colours are bad, they look messy and accidental, and they can detract from a great painting. You also want to have a dominant colour. In my painting, I've chosen this mid-blue-grey to be my most dominant colour. Variation is also really important, so I'm mixing up the colours with different tones and different saturations. I'm keeping it pretty abstract, focusing on the colour choices and the transitions between the colours. Some soft and some hard edges, it's all about that intentional variation. Then, to finish it all off, I'm just going to pop in some splashes of contrasting orange colour to really make something stand out in this composition. And I'm done! Slap a six-figure price tag on there and you've got yourself some modern art. I am actually going to try and paint something that involves a little bit more skill and looks good. Hopefully. For me, the hardest part about being an artist, especially in the niche that I'm in, is coming up with new ideas. There's so many amazingly talented wildlife artists out there that are creating beautiful and very realistic paintings. In a world where everyone seems to be making really similar and quite good quality art, how do you make your art the art that people want to buy? And I've been having a little bit of an existential crisis about this. I see so many realistic wildlife artists out there. There are loads that are better than me. They've been doing it for years longer than I have. But there's also realistic wildlife artists that aren't quite technically as good as I am. 
and I can see flaws in their work and improvements that can be made, as I'm sure other artists see in my work too. But do the people buying the art see those flaws? Do you need to be an artist to see them? At what point does the amount of skill and the amount of detail level out for the viewers of the art? Is it pointless spending so much time on a painting when it could have been finished in half the time, with half the detail, and still had the same response? Unfortunately, I don't have an answer for this, hence the crisis, but I do have another checkbox to think about, and that is, does the painting tell a story? Is that story easy to follow, but does it allow the viewer to engage and fill in some blanks? Can the viewer relate in some way to that story? What could the painting make them feel? I want to paint things that give the viewer a glimpse into a world that they want to live in. A world of hope, a world of beauty, a world of wonder. But everyone's perception of the world is different. There are, unfortunately, lots of hardships and struggles in the world that are all too real and relatable. And if I was painting along that theme, I wouldn't choose to paint the struggle. I would paint overcoming the struggle, giving that viewer a sense of hope, a sense of victory, something to strive towards. The subject doesn't matter. Animals, people, landscapes, abstracts, whatever. The painting needs to connect. Okay, back to the painting, and I usually get lost in the details with pieces like this, but for this one, I thought I'd stick to bigger brushes and build up from big shapes. I'm liking it so far, but it's late, so I'm going to come back tomorrow and finish it off. I woke up this morning thinking about how mental it actually is that I get to paint three days in a row and I get to actually do this for a living. Without the support of everyone who views, comments and likes all of my videos, without the Studio Wildlife patrons and everyone who buys my art and my prints from my website. Without you, I wouldn't be able to do my dream job and I am so grateful for you, so thank you. Anyway, enough with all that mushy stuff. This is going to be my final day on this painting. I want to refine it a little bit more, but I don't want to go overboard with the details. I'm keeping this piece quite abstract, or at least keeping it loose. To me, anything that isn't rendered realism counts as abstract. I know that's wrong, but I'm just going to keep thinking it anyway. As I'm growing and learning more, I'm starting to understand that there is a difference between realism slash hyperrealism and photorealism. To most people, those two things are one and the same, but they aren't. I'm starting to understand that looking like a photograph isn't enough. I want paintings that look like art. It doesn't matter if they're looser like this or more realistic. I still don't want them looking like a photo. I want texture and transitions, life and form that can only be captured by paint. As an artist, I'm transitioning into creating things that a camera can't, that build a world that a camera can't, that engage, that connect, that inspire in a way that a camera can't. And it's thinking like this that is going to completely change the way that I create art. There'll be realism still, there'll be more abstract pieces like this, and there will be combinations of both. There's something a little bit more freeing creating pieces like this tiger. I actually prefer the process over my realistic pieces. With them, you have an endpoint. An image that you're always working towards. But with this, there's no plan, there's no goal. It's just about getting in the zone and creating something new. 
all the while thinking about those checkboxes. Colour, emotion, story and connection. The process just seems to flow smoother and actually feels more natural than trying to achieve photo-like realism. My ultimate goal is to think this way, paint this way and create connections in this way with every single piece that I make. I recently read this quote that said, people do not buy art because it looks nice. People do not buy art just because you share it. People do not buy art because it matches their environment. People buy art because they see themselves in it. People buy art because they connect with it. And probably the most important thing, people buy your art because they connect with you. And that just blew my mind. It completely changed the way that I think about creating art and I hope it will inspire you to do the same. So those are just a couple of my thoughts and the things that I'm actually doing with my own work to connect, inspire and hopefully create work that people want to buy. I hope you found the video helpful and inspiring or you've just enjoyed watching me create this painting which is available through my website studiowildlife.com if you'd like to support me by becoming a collector of some of my paintings or prints. As always thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.